my blog. Welcome back to my collaborative project with Chris Cadle from Outline Displays. Chris helped me build this beautiful genuine neon sign. If you'd like to discuss your own sign project, then Chris's details are in the video description. In previous videos, I've shown you how I've taken an old Bedford lorry binnacle, I've cut the corners off the binnacle, used it for the corners on the sign, I've shown you how I put all those little sections together, welded them together and dealt with the heat distortion generated by the welding process. I've shown you how I've metal finished it. But in this video, what I'm going to show you is getting rid of those metal finishing marks. I'm going to start off by using an old converted polisher, which I've mounted an 80 grit DA disc to. Sanding it with a rotary sander has put this kind of brushed stainless steel effect into the surface of the steel. I can get rid of this by using a random orbital sander next. But first, what I'm going to do is trim the sign. So I'm going to use the narrowest part as a guide. I'm going to scribe it all the way round and trim the sign back. Then I'm going to finish off the sanding and polishing process before I embark on the painting processes. I think I'm going to make some straps up that go from side to side so I can put a bit of tension in the panel to ensure that the crown stays as it is. Uh, that's the best way I can think of doing this and certainly the most straightforward. The other thing I could have done of course is I could have spot welded braces into here but do I really want to do that? Not really. Uh, the other thing is I don't know whether that would compromise the tube fitting. The next stage will be to sand this down with 80 grit on a random orbital sander. Dual action sander, meaning that it's got a little device inside of there. You can't see it because it's got this dust extraction kit attached to it. But it's got a little device and you just spin a wheel and you can turn it into a rotary sander meaning it just spins round and round and round like the grinder so you could actually use this as well for metal finishing in fact i have for many years used one of these but i just find that the electric grinder has got a little bit more oomph for this purpose so anyway it's set to its random orbital mode which means that the disc goes like that and doesn't spin round and round and round and what I'm going to do is, this is all Velcro pads, what I'm going to do is use an 80 grit to start with. So I'm just going to put an 80 grit on there. I'm going to sand this down so I sand out the marks that make it look like sort of brushed steel. And just kind of get it a uniform dull finish all over. What I'll also do is put a wooden block underneath the area I'm sanding because this hasn't got much strength and I don't want to put dents in it by sanding it down. So that's 80 grit using a, a random orbital sander. And I quite like the way it all now looks like one piece of metal now that it's been sanded down and it's all uniform. So the next stage is to use a, a 180 to try and get the finish even better on the surface. This would, I cannot stress enough, this would be absolutely fine now just to degrease 
and get some epoxy primer on it because that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to epoxy prime this. But for those people that want to see a better finish, you know, like the perfect Instagram picture, then I'm going to show you a few more polishing techniques. So that's 180, starting to look a bit shinier. A little bit more sort of reflection going on and a little bit smoother. I'll probably just go over the 320, see if I've got a 320. And then I'll, that'll do and I'll just finish it off with a, a red Scotch Bright. Okay, 320. So red pad, I keep saying Scotch Bright, that's actually the name of the 3M product. I am in fact using a Merca product, same difference, same thing. So, um, yeah, just, I don't know if you can see that changing, but you can see it's going kind of more silky, taking that almost sort of polished look, high polished look off it. It's giving it a nice silky smooth kind of finish and just making it look more flowing and uniform because the thing is when you sand things down with the discs they can put a funny kind of pattern on the surface of the panel which can make it almost look like it's got dents and stuff going on if you just finish it off by hand kind of working in straight lines you can take that kind of patchiness out, if you're not insane. I think that'll do. Done that little corner for you. And if I was to take a picture from that angle, or a video from that angle, show it to the viewers, like you're watching now, then you would say, Wow, that looks pretty good Trev, and I can't believe that that is five separate sections welded together in this area alone. And then the sixth, of course, is the panel on the top. The only thing I will say is a couple of things on this. Um, you've got to think about the, the, the law of diminishing returns, and... What I really mean by that is, you know, you can spend a certain amount of time on something and make it look pretty good. So let's just say I've got 20 hours invested in this project. I don't know how many hours I have got because I don't care and I'm not keeping count. That's not what my life's about. Um, obviously, if I was doing it as a business, then every minute would count, wouldn't it? And then we'd start getting into situations where we've spent too long on it. You're either going to lose money yourself to achieve the desired result we're going to have to start charging the customer more but i'm not in those sort of realms but the law of diminishing returns so let's just say 20 hours it's taken to build that i can still see imperfections in this i may have one or two tiny little craters um, that i've just could have got a little bit better with the welder but at what point do you say enough is enough? And when I say the law of diminishing returns, so I put 20 hours into it, I could make this look absolutely flawless if I spent another 20 hours on it. But do you really want to invest twice the time into something to make it just two or 3% better? And that's what I mean by the law of diminishing returns. And um, the other thing as well, of course, is if you're going to paint it, you're going to cover up all this fantastic work and nobody's actually going to see it in the state it is. It could actually look like a piece of corrugated iron and then I could put it full of filler and end up with the same looking result at the end of the day. I will be putting a little bit of filler in this here and there. I've left a couple of little dings in it because what I intend to do is put the epoxy, so I want to put epoxy primer on it, I want to let that go off, I want to sand it, and I want to show, for people that have asked, filling over the top of epoxy primer, and how I've done that. So I've purposely left one or two small pieces that I could just, I could easily just lift out, but I'm not going to, I'm just going to leave them for purposes of that video.
I've just run the DA over the inside and I've also gone up into the corners with a clean and strip disc, the 3M one, just to go over it and make sure I dig out anything that's loose and leave the metal nice and bright, all ready for the primer. As you can appreciate, it looks pretty good. Yeah, you can see a few grinding marks and bits and pieces like that, but this is the underside, the inner side of the panel. If it was a car and it was gonna have some sort of textured coating or a few good coats of primer, then these little imperfections are very soon blend in and disappear. Well, thanks very much for watching and I really hope you did get something from that. Well, I've been as busy as I always am. I'm always too busy, aren't I? And um, I'd really hoped to get the plasma table up and running at least two months ago. But I had a chat to Rob from Extreme. We had a chat about my power supply into the workshop. And unfortunately, it's very borderline to being overloaded. So what we've come up with is running a separate supply in just to run the plasma cutter. So I've got some six mil armored cable. I was gonna run it from the house to the workshop. Couldn't do that because the fence has got to be replaced between myself and my neighbor. And that's exactly where that cable will be running. So it makes sense to get that fence done first. So the fence is done. So I should be able to get round to putting that cable in the ground. Ironically, I've actually got involved in wiring up a historic barn just to give myself a little bit of extra things to do. I've also done the Chooksby Classic Car Show, which was uh, a bit of a busy day. I mean, we were absolutely run for about seven hours solid. We actually felt like we'd been run over at the end of the day. Anyway, this guy came over and I knew of him and he knew my YouTube channel and he runs a company called Revive and he said, hey Trev, have a bottle of this stuff for your van because it's a quick detailer. You just sort of spray it on and wipe it off and it's very quick at bringing it up to a kind of almost nuclear glow. And um, I don't sort of checked into the company and it looks really nice stuff. I mean, I haven't actually, you know, I haven't gone to town using all their products, but what I quite like about it is it's actually a company just 10 miles down the road from me. So I thought I'd give it a plug because it's nice to support somebody local in the UK. Interesting little company. It seems to be run by three people, one of them being a chemist. So they actually formulate their own car care products and they're mad classic car enthusiasts. So everything's geared to classic cars. He did show me the range of stuff that they did, but my head was completely shot from serving customers from seven hours non-stop. I'd only literally had a sip of water in seven hours. It was that busy. Good day though. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'll show you this. So show you the packaging, because really nice bottle, nice packaging, nicely presented might make a nice present for somebody. I've had a chat to him since, a guy's called Neil, who I spoke to, and he said, if I give it a bit of a plug, as I am now, then he's gonna give me a discount code so you guys can, I think it's 20% off the product. I'll put a link in the video description to their website so you can see all the stuff. They've got tons and tons of stuff, waxes. I mean, like I said, it's really well presented. He was actually at the cl classic car show um, detailing. I think he had a Morris van there, uh, which uh, sort of illuminated. And um, if enough people are interested, what I thought I'd do is, because they're only like, like I say, they're only about 10 miles from where I live. If you're interested, I can uh, go down there and we'll video their whole product range and sort of get him to do a bit of detailing or something. So. Only if you're interested though. So that's the product. Like I say, it's, um, it's a quick detail. You just spray it on and wipe it off. It's all about sort of, you know, you've got an immaculate car, you take it to a show and it's got a bit of road dirt on it. You can just literally just wipe it off very, very quickly. And um, you haven't got to spend hours and hours waxing it from, from start to finish again. So that's what this product's all about. Um, is there anything else I wanted to cover? I don't think there is. Until next time, I'll say bye for now.
Thanks very much. <laughs> 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 <laughs>